Welcome back to Sports Weekly, and right now, we gotta talk about who is the most underrated coach in the NBA. And I would say it's Rick Adelman. And who is Rick Adelman? He is former NBA player, and he had a little de decent career. He averaged 7.7 .7 points per game, 3.5 assists per game, 2.4 rebounds a game, and he was a seven year, I mean, he played for the NBA seven for seven years. He had a decent career in the NBA, but as a coach, I would say he is, or he was a very underrated coach. You know, at first he was an assistant, after he finished his NBA career, he was an assistant coach for Cheme Chemeketa Community College. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's in Oregon. After the, he became an assistant coach, he became an assistant coach to Portland Trail Blazers in the NBA. And then after that, the rest is history. He got his job, he became a head coach of Portland Trail Blazers, and he was a coach for NBA for 23 years. He coached the Blazers, the Warriors, the Kings, the Rockets, and before he retired, he, he coached the Timberwolves. As a Blazers coach from 1990 to 1992, he made the NBA Finals twice and the Western Conference once. And that was, you know, like right there, that's already a good resume. And guess what? He lost to a powerhouse teams in the 1990s or late 1980s. You don't want to face against the Lakers, the Pistons, and the Bulls. And that's the reason why he lost. And that team are led by basically superstars. Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, and Michael Jordan with Phil Jackson. So if I was a coach in the late, late 80s or early 90s, I would even just quit because these guys, if you face these guys, don't even try because they're going to just annihilate you in the playoffs. And there is no way this te I mean, his team will beat this team's in their prime. And he was eventually fired by the Blazers because he, I guess, when you don't, you made the NBA Finals and Western Conference Finals, I guess the organization think you can't win the championship, so they let you go, even though you're the one, the reason why they made it to the Finals. But yeah, he was fired by the Blazers and took his talent to Golden State Warriors, and those two years didn't really sit well and they didn't make the playoffs, so the Golden State Warriors fired him. And after he was fired, he got a new place. He was hired as a new head coach for Sacramento Kings in 1998 to 1999 season. Prior to that season, the Kings didn't even make the playoffs. So the Kings made the blockbuster move and got drafted Peja Stojakovic, traded for Chris Weber, and you know, Peja Stojakovic actually, they drafted Peja Stojakovic, but he signed in that season, 1998. Before hiring Edelman, Kings didn't even make the playoffs since they started the organization in 1986. They only made it once in 1995. And uh, basically, when Adelman made it to the Sacramento Kings, he changed the whole dynamics and atmos atmospheres in, in Kings organization. Uh, fortunately, they faced Los Angeles Lakers. From 2000 to 2002 playoffs, they actually almost beat the uh, Lakers twice. In 2000, it was 2-3 in the playoffs. They only need to beat them once after that. And it was the same thing for in 2002 playoffs when it, it was tied 3-3 and then the Lakers somehow beat them. But 2002 playoffs was a weird year because do you guys remember uh, Tim Dunhe? He was the referee in the game six, um, game six of Kings versus Lakers led by Shaq, Kobe, and Phil Jackson as a coach. And Tim actually mentioned that he rigged the game. Yeah, all these things, how they end up finding out seven years later, you know, that he rigged the game because Lakers had 27 free throw shots because, because it was so rigged. Like you can tell, like there's one time Kobe elbowed Mike Bibby in the nose and almost broke his nose, his nose bleeding. But they call they call the foul. I mean, Tim called the foul on Mike Bibby. So that was basically the critical. It was a critical game. 
it was rigged and it basically changed the momentum. Sacramento Kings should have won that series because if they won that game six, they would have went to the NBA Finals, you know, NBA Finals, and they would have faced the New Jersey Nets. And New Jersey Nets was not even a competition compared to the Kings and compared to the Lakers because when Lakers made to the NBA Finals, they beat them. They beat. They beat them in 4-0. They beat them four times, and that, I mean, that was an easy route for the Lakers. But they end up letting go Rick Adelman, and those season, you know, they end up letting go his contract uh, expired, and he left the Kings. And the Sacramento Kings have yet not reached the playoffs since 2006. Since 2006, Sacramento didn't make the playoffs, and they have decent starts. They had Isaiah Thomas there. They have DeMarcus Cousins, and they have Darren Fox, and since then, it was basically a fail. That organization failed since letting go Rick Adelman, they don't have anything. So after that, he went to Houston Rockets, and also in that time, Sacramento Kings start letting go of players. They let go Chris Webber, and that was the downfall. They let go the coach, the best player, and Rick Adelman went to Houston Rockets in 2007. They made the playoff twice, and he led the team to a 22 game winning streak in 2008 and at that time that was the most wins uh most wins in the nba in a row and in 2008 2009 season the rockets had a great team led by tracy mcgrady and yao ming but sadly tracy mcgrady got hurt then yao ming got hurt and then when they made the playoffs the kambi matombo got hurt all this had um season ending uh, season I mean season ending injury and that was basically you thought that was it they're not gonna they're gonna be they were gone in the first round but it actually it didn't matter because Rick Adam still had the 53 wins and 29 losses in 2009 season and then like I said they entered the playoffs and Mot Motombo got hurt but they beat the uh, Blazers uh, Portland Trail Blazers and just whiffed through it was like four four one four one uh they won four times and lost only once and then so they they went to the second round and guess what they played against the los angeles lakers led by kobe and guess who's the coach phil jackson it was you know it was it was a great battle it was a great battle between the two because Ron Artest and Shane Battier was guarding Kobe the whole series. And guard, those two was the, at that time, with, between 2000 and 2010, the best defenders are Ron Artest and Shane Battier. But unfortunately, Rockets lost in game seven against the Lakers. And after that season, the Rockets was on rebuild mode and they moved on from Rick Adelman. So Rick Adelman got a job in Minnesota Timberwolves and he didn't make the playoffs ever again because his team wasn't that good and you can just tell uh the everything was changing because of steph curry everything um the the court is kind of like bigger now because it stretched everything of where, where is iris i mean where is uh steph curry shooting and it just changed the whole nba and since then if i'll say if phil jackson never coached the NBA, I'll, I will say Rick Adelman probably have an NBA championship ring right now. And that's, that's the only thing that was basically his kryptonite. He couldn't beat Phil Jackson in the NBA Finals or NBA Playoffs. And his record as a head coach is 1,042 wins and 740, 749 losses. He never won a coach of the year, never won an NBA championship, but I will say that he is the most underrated coach of the NBA. That is it for now, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about the greatest what-ifs in Kevin Garnett's career.